Hello, this is Discover, and we take customer service very seriously. We know that if you have a question or concern about your credit card, that's a serious matter, and you need to talk to a real person about it. So we offer around-the-clock access to seriously talented representatives in the USA. Again, it's a serious endeavor. The only funny thing about it is Bob. If you call us and Bob answers, you're in for a treat. Get 100% U.S.-based customer service and talk to a real person day or night. Discover exceptionally common sense. You know when you order a new video game or a golf club or a blender and then it arrives at your door, you get a little thrill. Imagine how much more thrilling it is when you order a new car. With Nissan at home, you can shop for the perfect ride and order it without ever having to go anywhere. Sure beats a golf club or a blender. Buy a new car entirely online with Nissan at home. Deliver direct from dealer to driveway. Thrill starts here. Services may vary at participating dealers subject to applicable law. See dealer for details. Hey friend, real quick before we get into today's episode. If you enjoy Infertility and Me podcast, do me a quick, quick favor and rate and review in Apple iTunes. Give us five stars so that we can reach more friends who may be silently suffering from infertility too. Welcome to Infertility and Me podcast, a show that amplifies diverse stories about the struggles of infertility and fertility in a safe space. Our goal is to normalize fertility stories that validate, give hope, and create a community where no one is left silently suffering. Welcome y'all to Infertility and Me podcast. I'm your host, Monique Farouk. Thank you for being here with me and thank you for letting me be a part of your day. It is such an honor to be here with you in your ear space, wherever you're listening. Today, we're talking about self-esteem and rebuilding our self-worth during infertility and or after infertility diagnoses. Look, I've been there (laughs) so many times with questioning and seeking validation from multiple, multiple places along the infertility path. and a lot of times what happens is that infertility amplifies the issues that we have with ourself even more. And I feel like if we already struggling in that area before infertility and or any other fertility struggles and or diagnosis is that it just amplifies it and it makes it worse and it makes you feel worse about yourself and it effing sucks. So today we're just talking about rebuilding that thing and looking for the signs of when we know we need to start rebuilding it and to possibly get help as well from our therapist that could help with those issues. Some people I know and um, have nutritionists and then if you're someone overweight then that becomes a separate issue and I have episodes on that as well from women who were told their BMI was too high for infertility treatments, such as Ashley when she talked about her fibromyalgia. And then one of our anonymous friends also talked about being discriminated against by her specialist because of her weight. And that was the episode where she was single and trying to conceive. And the name of that episode along with I'm going to give you both episode names so you can go back and refer if you've never listened to it before or if you're just new here and you wouldn't have heard it yet. You may not be that far cut up. So the first episode that you can go back and refer to is dated March 26th of 2021. And the title of that episode is trying to conceive when you are single, when you are a single woman. And that's what our anonymous friend And I had her name down as Denise for that episode. She talks about it in that episode. And then the other episode where it's talked about a little, little, little bit with Ashley. And she was talking about her fibromyalgia as well as some other conditions she suffers from as well as infertility. I'm going to pull up hers as well so you know what exact episode to refer to so that's dated august 21st 2020 with ashley and that is entitled ashley i'm still in here pcos fibromyalgia and lupus survivor and so i know for a fact those two episodes talk about being overweight and then having to go through fertility treatments and the doctor's discriminating against you and or not being willing to work with above recommended BMI for infertility treatments or fertility treatments. 
And so if you're going through something like that, please refer back to those two episodes. And then um, hopefully those ladies can help validate how you feel. And you can also connect with them online, especially Ashley, because her page is public, uh, Rage Against Infertility. And in that episode, there should be a link for her Instagram page and you can reach out to her. But anyway, so yeah, so we're talking about this thing called self-esteem, y'all. Like, I feel like self-esteem is so crazy in relation to infertility is because it's like we cannot get away from it because we start puberty. And especially for us girls, we play this comparison game and it starts very, very early for girls. And I can't, there are times when you, as you go into adolescence where it's portrayed in the media okay for women to always be at odds with each other. And I kind of feel like they set us up like that on purpose to keep us divided for whatever reasons um, that may be. But it starts very early for us women. I feel like we go through that very early and we go through it our entire lives. And no matter how much work we do to contribute to our self-confidence and to to boost our self-confidence and to not just boost it, but to also feel it deeply within our subconscious and being freely ourselves and our bodies the way that they are, however that looks and whatever stage we're in and our fitness and health journeys and such like that. And eating disorders is just as prevalent in men as well. But specifically for for women, I know that it can begin to start maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and that's just my experience as a natural born woman. And so, you know, it's so it's so hard when you get your diagnosis of infertility and or you suffer from reoccurrent miscarriages because of some other underlying condition that you may not know about yet and or are getting tested for at the moment or you just got tested for it and there's some underlying condition that's causing your reoccurring miscarriages and if you're one of our bros listening then you having low sperm cow azoospermia uh, maybe you were sick with cancer or some other condition and it's contributing to your male factor infertility and I just feel like at some point especially if you've been on this path for a very long time at some point we have to find ways like I said in the last episode week before last we have to find ways to thrive cope heal and move forward while we're in the midst of things and part of that is our low self-esteem and it's very important because When or if you do have that child or that bundle or you get that BFP, then you will have another life that you have to take care of and also help them be confident in who they are. And we cannot do that if we are not working on it ourselves. And you don't have to be skinny. You don't have to be tall. You don't have to be the most fit person in the room to feel confident in your own body. And I know for myself personally, after being diagnosed I was in uh, some of the best shape of my life physically, not because I was very small at the time, but because I was actively working out to build my body strength and my muscles and to be able to carry this life that I wanted so bad. And unfortunately, even with all the work that I did after getting the diagnosis, it still hits your self-esteem and your self-worth. And we can walk around portraying these images or portraying to the world that we're so self-confident and all that but when the lights are out and we're just by ourselves we feel like crap and we feel like shit essentially you know so I I thought it was very necessary to give you guys some some ways in which I healed or helped to to rebuild my self-worth and self-esteem after being diagnosed and going through infertility and then having a premature premature baby and then going through the mom bod phase, which I'm kind of still in. (laughs) I lost a ton of weight after I stopped nursing uh, because I had gained a lot of weight while I was nursing over the course of 13 months. And um, I still have struggles because now I'm in my late thirties and it's just not as easy to lose weight like it used to be. And it doesn't drop off as as quickly as it used to. And I don't always feel motivated and you don't always want to go and work out, you know, or and or go outside for that matter. So there's so much that goes into rebuilding self-esteem, but there, I feel like there's some practical things that we can do outside of getting the therapy that we need to help us remember who we are essentially. And I think that's why I started with assessing with whether you had feelings of low self-worth and or self-esteem 
before you even were diagnosed with infertility or started having fertility struggles. Because if that was already a struggle for you, it's going to be completely amplified after your diagnosis. And so if you can sit back and say, dag on it, I already had this issue in a major way beforehand. So maybe it's time for me to get help. Maybe it's time for me to take some small steps to help me feel better about myself. And then of course, if you're on medications for your fertility treatments, it's not going to be any better because those hormones that you're taking, which essentially are synthetic hormones, are going to make you feel worse because of the way it affects us women and sometimes men. And so, you know, there's so many things that's going on at one time when we're in the midst of this thing and in the thick of it that contributes to our feelings of shattered self-esteem and such. And I don't, and you know, it's for a while, I, I wasn't even looking for ways to rebuild my self-worth because I was still exercising even after my diagnosis and so I was masking behind that and working even harder at my outer physical appearance and 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 it did give satisfaction and it does give satisfaction when you complete your exercises or your weight training or a combination of the two or you're continually pushing yourself to do more physically to feel stronger and to feel better about yourself if we're not careful it will cause even more depression. It will cause even more feelings of despair for what our bodies are not doing <laughs> because of the diagnosis, right? And so I'm just feeling like crap all the way around, taking these medications, doing these injections with these long ASF needles, you know, and having to present this face of vulnerability to my partner because at some point you just can't hold it any longer especially if you've done it for if you've been on the road for a long time like at some point you just don't even care you just cry wherever you feel like crying and you and you get angry and you feel all of these things all at one time and I think we really just have to be honest about where we are and how it contributes to our feelings of self worth and it's definitely something you should bring up to your specialist and or your therapist and your coaches whoever is helping you along emotionally outside of your spouse and so that's that would be step number one for me and that is what I did as my step number one and I've already covered this but my second note was to be honest about how you view your body no matter how long it's been since you were diagnosed which I already touched on and then once you do that then you can go to your specialist and therapist, like I just said, and then they can help you with finding ways or revealing ways that rebuild your self-esteem and your self-worth without creating more toxicity. Because I feel like whether it's being on social media, there are in the self-care movement, I should say, can be really toxic in that it there almost doesn't seem to be when you see it on social media or you hear people talking about it on platforms like this or YouTube or something like that. It's almost like they don't allow for the feelings of of discomfort, anger, um, sadness. It's always like trying to put on this positive patty or positive Joe face. I don't think that the self-care movement is always helpful. And there's many people I know in the community that I've talked to personally in DMs who said that they just feel a lot of rage and anger towards the situation. And so stuff like that is not effective for them. Affirmations are not effective for them. And after a while, it won't be, you know, it won't be effective for you. And for a lot of people praying and meditating, they get out of the habit of that because they're like, well, what's the point of doing all of that if I'm in this situation? Because I feel like when you get diagnosed, you go through these stages and these stages of grief. And one of those stages being that, well, what the heck am I going to pray for or meditate for and sit in silence and to a God who I can't see and or to a spirit that I don't feel at the moment because I am so downtrodden by my situation of infertility and family building. And so again, <laughs> I can't say it enough. Seek your therapist, get the help that you need, go extra, find a way fight with your insurance company to pay for more sessions whatever it is that you have to do especially if you're not someone like myself who is very self soothing independent kind of thing going on and um i know a lot of people are not like that and so we we definitely need the extra help and if you are like that you still <laughs> definitely might need the extra help and so even with your exercising and stuff don't feel bad if you don't feel like it 
And it's all about balance, I believe. And me being a Libra, I'm the lady with the balance and beans. I'm always looking for balance. And so when I'm going through these crazy emotions, I'm like, okay, I recognize and I submit to the fact that this is what it is right now in this moment. And then I find a way where I can not necessarily pull myself out of it, but just move along my day without affecting anyone else more than I need to. You know, sometimes it's unavoidable and you can't help it, but we definitely have to be honest about to ourselves about where we are. And then another tool that I used and that I also recommend. You know when you order a new video game or a golf club or a blender and then it arrives at your door, you get a little thrill. Imagine how much more thrilling it is when you order a new car. With Nissan at home, you can shop for the perfect ride and order it without ever having to go anywhere. Sure beats a golf club or a blender. Buy a new car entirely online with Nissan at home. Deliver direct from dealer to driveway. Thrill starts here. Services may vary at participating dealers subject to applicable law. See dealer for details. Hello, Discover here to explain our cash back match. Here's how it works. We give you cash back for using your Discover card on the things you were going to buy anyway. Then we match that cash back in your first year. And that's why we call it cash back match. Now to recap and say cash back one more time. We match all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year automatically. Discover, exceptionally common sense. Learn more at discover.com slash match. Limitations apply. Recommend to others that I speak to in the community is um, finding new hobbies and passions. And especially if your former hobbies and passions no longer do it for you. If you were someone who collected, say, vinyl records and or you were um, someone who loved swimming and so every day you would go for a couple of laps in the pool and stuff like that. If that's no longer effective for you, then you might need to try something new. You may need to go another route for coping with how you're feeling and finding a way that helps you just do something that you enjoy, but at the same time allows for um uh, uh, just allows the space for you to be who you are. You, you know, you can garden and be angry. You can garden and be sad, or you can paint and be sad, paint and be angry, draw, illustrate, sing. You can do all of those things and still be, and still feel emotionally how you feel without it being toxic positive. And so that would be my next recommendation is just indulging in hobbies and passions, new and or old, and then doing it more frequently. And then the next one I had was having honest conversations and discussions with your spouse about how you're feeling about your own self imagery, because you know, guy, you guys know. Look, you know, friend, when you're not feeling good about yourself. You're short with your spouse. You don't want to be bothered. You don't want to be intimate, sexually or non-sexually. You don't want to do any of those things because you don't feel your divine feminine and or masculine self, and so you don't think that you're desirable. And that's the issue that we face with these diagnoses is that we we don't lose it, but the diagnosis and our situations overshadow what we know to be true about ourselves. We look in the mirror and we know who we are and we see ourselves. And even though we may not feel sexy in that moment and at that time, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's there. It's just laying low and it's dormant and it's really hard because especially I know for myself as a woman I just blame myself I just I just dealt with a lot of guilt and a lot of blame for my body not doing what it was created to do on its own and it's just you just don't feel sexy <laughs> bottom line you don't feel sexy about yourself you wonder if your your spouse sees you any differently no matter how reassuring they are and they tell you that I see you no differently you still are who you are the beautiful person that you are the sexy attractive man or woman that I always need to be and it's only so much they can help you with because you have to believe it for yourself and you have to know it in your in your subconscious and in your spirit and in your entire being that you are worthy of love you are worthy of being loved and you are worthy of receiving love and giving love to yourself as well. And so definitely have the conversations with your spouse. And I'm going to tell you guys a secret. You better not tell nobody, okay? They got to listen to the whole episode <laughs> to hear this part. But there have been times in the past where I have cried right in the middle of foreplay and or in the midst of the, act, the very act of it. 
of sex because I just it was like this feeling of joy and despair at the same time because it's like man of all the things that I feel about myself his love has not changed the way he sees me has not changed and the despair comes in because it's like I'm trying to see myself the way I used to see myself and or better than the way that I used to see myself and um, it just brings me to it, it, there's been times where it just brought me to tears right in the middle of intimacy and foreplay and or sex and so we have to let our walls down at some point and we have to be honest with our spouses about how we see ourselves and so they know when you're having a bad day <laughs> you know it's all about communication communicate 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 that's that's the bottom line especially when you're in the thick of things you're going to have to communicate and you're going to have to do it more frequently and then since we're on this topic of intimacy and sexual desires and not feeling sexy and or feeling sexy one day and not feeling sexy the other day and worrying about if that gut is ever going to go away after all the hormones have made you eat more of the things that you weren't eating before. And that is creating more intimate moments with your spouse that are non-sexual. Uh, we're very effective in me just being able to tap into my feminine source and feeling sexy again and feeling desirable and remembering who the F I am basically. And then, you know, at the end of the day, it's just remembering who you are and, rem and, and knowing who you are going forward because we, we absolutely change, you know? And so that was a really, really, really big one for me. And I know that not everybody's spouse is good at that. And if you are the one who is better at that, then maybe you should be the one to initiate it. And so that your spouse doesn't feel any more, any less pressured to do outlandish things. Well, they like, it's so crazy because they have, they do and don't know how to navigate it because it's, an, it's, an, it's a new experience for all of you. And if it's an experience you've been on for a while, you may be in a groove of something and you may be able to do these things really easily when you're feeling up to it. Put ourselves out there, vulnerability wise. And, and so we definitely have to create more intimate times and moments. And I know you've seen it all over the place and heard it all over the place that we should go on more dates and just practice the art of holding hands or practice the art of just staring into one another's eyes and or just breathing in each other's breath as you hug intimately that is non-sexual whether you are fully clothed and or not <laughs> make it spicy however you like and going from there and just letting the moment flow and the conversation flow and I know there are many of you who have children already whether it's through fertility treatments and or you are experiencing now secondary infertility just maybe put the baby to bed or the kids to bed an extra couple of days during the week so you can have those moments or just having those moments of silence sitting next to each other in whatever intimate space you prefer in your own home and then just letting it flow man just letting it flow and then you also got to remember that you have to believe it in your own subconscious that you are the shit, that you are worthy of self-love and self-admiration and that your diagnosis truly is not who you are and it darn sure does not define who you are and it does not make you any less of a man and or a woman or however your pronoun goes. It does not make you any less of that. And for our friends and family who are part of the LGBTQ plus community that are trans, etc., I know that it's difficult and it is hard being in your position and having to come out into the world and trying to find community and just know that whatever your pronoun is, know that whoever you are, whatever you are, that you are not any less of a person because of the struggles and or your fertility status or your inability to hold life or your inability to produce sperm or your inability to produce quality eggs and please believe me if no one else knows how you feel it's definitely me 
when you go your entire life accomplishing so much and working towards a life that would be conducive to raising a family in a positive way. And then you hit the roadblock of infertility. It just disrupts everything about what you thought it was going to look like. And we say that all the time, you know, but, and I know that you guys probably get tired of hearing it, but it is absolutely true. And you have to believe it, friend. You got to believe it. You have to believe it. And you have to get help. You can't do it all ourselves. I will preach therapy to the choir for the rest of my existence because it's necessary. And especially if it's someone you resonate with and making sure that you find someone that you resonate with so that you can get help while you're in the thick of things and after however your situation turns out to be. So again, you are worthy of love. You are worthy, worthy of being loved. You are more than worthy of self-worth. You deserve it. Now all you got to do, pick up the pieces of your self theme and put it back together so that you could be your best self and thrive in these infertility streets. I am your host, Monique Farouk. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you are following on your favorite platform. Make sure you're following on Instagram at Infertility and Me Podcast. That is the only social media site that the show is featured on. So if you see any pages that say Infertility Me Podcast anywhere on any of the platforms, it is not I. And you can email me at info at moniquefarouk.com if you'd like to share your story on the show. And you could submit your story with that email and or visit the website moniquefarouk.com and fill out the contact form. And you can do so whether you want to share publicly and or anonymously. And if you really like this episode, friend, make sure you pass it along to a friend who you think might feel validated by it and or needs it or save it in your audio platform so that you can refer back to later. Thank you, friend, for tuning in today to Infertility and Me podcast. Peace and blessings. You know when you order a new video game, or a golf club, or a blender, and then it arrives at your door, you get a little thrill. Imagine how much more thrilling it is when you order a new car. With Nissan at Home, you can shop for the perfect ride and order it without ever having to go anywhere. Sure beats a golf club or a blender. Buy a new car entirely online with Nissan at Home. Deliver direct from dealer to driveway. Thrill starts here. Services may vary at participating dealers subject to applicable lossy dealer for details. Hello, Discover here to explain our cash back match. Here's how it works. We give you cash back for using your Discover card on the things you were going to buy anyway. Then we match that cash back in your first year. And that's why we call it cash back match. Now to recap and say cash back one more time. We match all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year automatically. Discover, exceptionally common sense. Learn more at discover.com slash match. Limitations apply.